All right, so with these next two multiple choice, again, I would recommend try and push pause on this video and try and do them on your own right now before I go through them and see, see if you can just kind of assess your own level of understanding for the material. And then if you get it, great. And if you don't, great, we're gonna learn from that too. All right, so example 15, find the expected value, okay, of the cell marked with these three stars in the following three by two table. The bold face values are the marginal totals. So it looks like I have some observed data. Right? I don't know what my variables are. I didn't give you any context, but it looks like I basically have, right, three rows, and then we have two columns, hence the three by two. Okay, and I would like the expected value coming off of that cell. That's what I'm being asked to find. What is that expected value? Okay, now I made this problem in such a way that you can't use your chi-squared test on your calculator because you don't know the observed values. This is me testing you. Did you know that the expected cell count for or expected count for any cell is row total times column total over grand total? And if you remember that formula, then this problem unlocks, right? So if I put my pencil in this cell, I'm in the row that has 31, the column that has 32, right? So 31 is my row total, 32 is my column total, and 77 is my grand total. So 31 times 32 over 30, it's not 37, excuse me, 77. All right, are they gonna keep reminding me? 31 times 32 divided by 77. It looks like my expected count is 12.88, okay? Now, if I was just doing this problem and I couldn't remember the formula, I would rule out A. A is way too large, right? If you only have 77 people or 77 whatever it is, widgets or animals or trees, um, if you only have 77 observations in your sample in total, it's almost impossible for for one of them to be um, to have an expected count of 74. That's almost all of your sample, okay? All right, so with that, let's take a look at example 16. So let's get this into view, okay? All right, so this says, an educator randomly selects 300 statistics students to check whether there is a relationship, okay? So I can already see it's gonna be a chi-squared test for independence, a relationship between the student passing the course and his or her number of absences. So it looks like I have my two categorical variables, right? So I'll write two categorical variables. Right, I have your course pass status. and then number of classes missed. And you might be saying to yourself, hey, Miss A, number of classes missed, that's a numerical variable. And, and I agree with you, but they put it into categories, right? They clumped you into the zero or one category, two to three, or they put you in the four or more. So they took this discrete numerical variable and put it into categories, all right? And I can see all of these frequency counts in here, right? There are six categories. So again, I just wanna point out, right, frequencies, anytime I see frequencies, I know I'm gonna be in proportion land or I'm, I'm likely to be in proportion land. So we are in prop land. It looks like I have two rows and three columns. So I actually have six categories. I'm gonna use the chi-squared test. And I, I knew it would be the chi-squared test for independence. And on top of it, I see this, this buzzword of a relationship. Okay, so for the chi-squared test of independence, what type of error have been made, might have been made? All right, type one, type two, and then we have the p-value was greater than or less than 0.05. So it looks like the first thing I need to do is figure out what the p-value is, and then just, I, I can start to narrow it down. I'll, I'll, just from that, I'll decide the p-value is either greater than or less than 0.05. That'll rule out two of the answers. So let's go into the matrix, all right. I'm gonna edit this out. So here, I need to make this match. I need a two by three, right? Now that looks like the, the table in front of me, right? So this shape wah, has the same thing, has the same shape as the, the problem presented to me. So if I start pumping these in, we got 30, 
oops, yeah, 50, 100, and then we have 10, 30, and 80. So I get my matrix going there, and then let me go run my chi-squared test. And it looks like my p-value is about 7%. All right, so let me go ahead and say here my p-value is 0 0.07. So at that point, it's in reference to a p-value of 5%. So my p-value is definitely greater than 5%. So I can rule out B and I can rule out D because those two phrases have p-values less than 5%. And that's just not true. All right, then I've got to decide what kind of error might I have made? All right, so let's do it. If my p-value is greater than alpha, right? We know we're gonna fail to reject H naught. Anytime you fail to reject H naught, when that is your conclusion, all right, that means you're keeping the null basically, right? You're saying, hey, you have not convinced me that the alternate is true. So if we have to compete between H zero and H A, right, you're keeping the first one. All right, well, if, the, if you keep the first one, but the second one is actually true, right, if the second equation is true, that means you might have made a type two error. Now, if you don't like comparing H O and H A, just remember that whenever you fail to reject the null, it's the type two error that you might have made. So here we go, which one of these says type two? It looks like C, there's my answer. All right, so we got one more example problem we're gonna take a look at, and that's just us um, seeing how a mini tab presents the answers uh, in, in a different way than your calculator would. And mini tabs that program, it's a big stats program out in the real world. The one that I'm not gonna make you pay for because it's like $1,000 a person, but I just want you to see what that output would look like. All right, I'll see you in a few, bye.